Aoka, welcome to another episode side, uh, for our presenters tonight for the web series. Um, tonight we have the wonderful people, our brothers and sisters down south, uh, Batani, Wayne Wilson, presenting tonight, and also Joanne Whiting. And um, welcome. And um, hopefully we can uh, listen to the words of some more rhythms of mind, body, and, and spirit and prayer. So tonight's uh, those questions. So please ask questions. If you got no um, uh, things to ask them, please feel free to ask questions at this particular time. All right, welcome. Is, is it all right for me to share, share this prayer? I'd like to mm -hmm. share a prayer um, because of the things that we'll be talking about. The Neb citizen bay. Yoda is as a in it is as a po tashin po po biaj kadidin ashki and nilt ani at ed sa anagai big a hojo hojo na hasli hojo na hasli. My name is uh, Wayne Wilson and um, Joanne. Will, uh, so you want to? My name is Joanne Wedding. I've been helping Wayne since March 22nd of last year. Um, this year, March 22nd, it'll be a year. We uh, started out with that red Ford truck with a 55 gallon barrel delivering water, food, and cleaning supplies at the time. Mm -hmm. I went to Washington to get my son and a load of donated food, cleaning supplies, women's personal hygiene products, and a whole bunch of other stuff from Chris. Um, in Seattle and I brought my son back and when I come back we were beyond upgraded we were at 275 gallon totes and we were giving out water barrels 60 gallon 55 um 35. 35s 15s pumps uh we do firewood if people need firewood up to the grandmas um last Wednesday night Wayne had a um Wayne had a call out we had a call out um it really put it close to home. Um, it's less than two blocks away from us. Um, a woman and her three kids can't leave the house. They're quarantined, um, can't go nowhere. They needed food. And um, when we dropped it off, I don't think she was expecting what we all gave her. Um, we gave her personal hygiene products for her and her three daughters, toilet paper, paper towels. We overwhelmed her so much that she started crying and so thankful for about what we gave her that she doesn't have to worry about where she, what she's going to do for two weeks when she's under quarantine. That's about all I got. <laughs> <laughs> and Joanne has been very modest because I, they've I, been I, doing I, so when I come much. Back, I, that's when I get to meet Kelly and her daughter. Um, when we come back, ah. we'll come, come back from Seattle, Washington, me and my son um kelly showed up and we brought barrels and that's when i got to meet kelly and her daughter and we got to travel and we got to uh get, take her down dirt roads <laughs> which i was <laughs> off. she even busted dishes in her little van um motorhome thing it got dishes got busted it, kelly got to really got to see what roads we go down what we have to go through to get to somebody's house um that's not like all paved roads um, it's all dirt roads and it's hogans, no running water. Um, grandmas are always thankful. Um, we went and delivered one way, um, oh, I'm trying to think now, over there where we just delivered the ones on the top of the hill, um, going towards uh, Monument Valley. The grandma didn't speak English. Oh, we're in um, Talani Lake. Talani Lake. Uh, grandma didn't speak English, so I get out not knowing that and um to tell her oh just a minute what we're doing and she's like got a panic look on her face because she didn't understand me she never once went to school so she doesn't how to speak english so that's some of my things i've run into along with that i i've been everywhere all four corners 
I, we don't have no borders, so it doesn't matter if they're Navajo, Zuni, Apache, um, Hopi. Um, if they in need, we deliver. Um, it seems to be day or night <laughs> because um, we do it. Um, it, it, I, it warms my heart to see a kid, you know, look in a box of stuff and I put, slip like yogurts in there for them to have something for themselves besides the food that they're getting. It's something special just for them. That's the little things that make me happy and I know that makes them happy. Um, grandmas that love having the pumps, doing the demonstration with the pump, um, they really like it for the fact that they don't have to siphon water no more. Wayne, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? But I mean, Wayne. And late, you see, I had that one, Shadow Wayne Wilson, that's she, Jimmy. Um, <clears throat> I'm Folded Arms Clan, born for the two waters that flow together clan. Um, Bitter Water is my maternal grandparent, and my paternal grandparent is uh, Black Street and the Running Tree Clan. That's who I am. My name is Wayne Wilson. I'm originally from Pine Springs. Um, I have uh, a place out there that we uh, sometimes check on. Um, uh, Hogan, a dwelling out there in, in the in the forest near the canyon. So um, <clears throat> yeah, my my I, I was uh, some of you don't know, but um, I was raised by my grandmother and my grandfather, who um, um, they taught me a lot about the the ceremonial um, ways of uh, how how you um, conduct uh, collect herbs, anything medicine wise. You have to do you have to do offering. <clears throat> so when you do offering, you do a, a prayer so that uh, you're asking for assistance. And so what I'm sharing is some of the um, um, methods are uh, like uh, when we um, like even with water, the same thing, you know, water is a medicine. So when we harvest water, you have to do you have to give something, you know, even if it's corn pollen, tobacco, um, whatever you have, it could be just the little you know, something that you really like, or you stone, you know, uh, turquoise stone, or, you know, some say turquoise or white shell or abalone or a uh, black stone. So these are uh, what the, what the, I was told that the holy people like, you know, to, they're attracted to. So when they see these and you give them as offering, they're, you're giving the best of what you have. <clears throat> so that's kind of like what, it, what the teachings are. So what I'm sharing with you is, um, what my grandfather, uh, John Burnside, shared and told me, and um, he told me all in Navajo uh, when I was a little little boy, he told me, well, I used to sit under the table and he would be talking to me and I thought he was talking to everybody, but I realized that he was talking to me about certain things. And um, so I would I used to help him out a lot, you know, like kind of like uh, in the church, how they have a, um, the person, the, the, the little boy to go to go around and collect things or go and light the candles. So it's kind of like that. So I was helping him out with like just uh, giving out um, arrowheads and then collecting them. And then also um, like when we had to do the medicine grinding, you know, there was songs that he would sing and then um, we do the grinding. And then um, in that way, he would uh, tell me to uh, mix it while he's singing and you know, mix it in a, a, a little bowl, a clay bowl and uh, making the, the mixture for us to drink. I didn't realize what it was about, but then later on, he explained to me, he said, uh, that medicine that we made is for anything that's foreign that enters your body. And we want we don't want sickness around. So when you, take, when you drink that medicine, then that's going to help well, extract anything that's foreign to, into your body. So um, he, was, he was pretty knowledgeable um, uh, grandfather so and then my grandmother used I used to herd sheep with her so those are some of the things that uh, I, that I did you know uh, as part of um, growing up as I went to school and went to uh, I also uh, my uncles my uncles and my uh, my uh, their mother on I guess their my grandmother and the, um, their mother uh, Elta Khan was the late Elta Khan she um, I guess that side of the family were Baha'is and that's how I got involved was through with the Baha'i faith was through them. And so it kind of explained a lot of things to me, but 
I kind of I, I kind of understand now about the spiritual part of uh, of what it means to like for some people they read the Bible, but then they, they, we're encouraged to do that. But at the same time, we're encouraged to read the writings of yes. other, um, I guess you could say, holy people or manifestations of God. That's that's kind of where where I um, started doing my own research and seeing um, there's a word that's called ket not ashe that they don't use anymore. I haven't heard it only in the Yebiche, the Yebiche, which is the nine night ceremony that has to do with um, the, a healing of the of a patient. And they have to go through nine nights, like part of it is bathing and part of it's, uh, you know, um, the singing. And so those are some of the ceremonial um, things that we, we, uh, we've been uh, practicing and doing. And um, so what I'm, uh, well, what it comes to now is like the water situation, like doing mm -hmm. water, um, hauling water and hauling, you know, what, what I'm trying to um, say is that the things that we did ceremonially on one side was to help people. Even when to have a ceremony, you had to have someone to bring water, someone to bring food, someone to bring firewood, someone to bring whatever is needed for this patient to get well. So, <clears throat> In our way, I'm just following what our the original instructions were from the holy people on when something like this happens and you need to do stuff, you, you have to help. And so even if it means you're gonna get sick, yes, you still have to help. And and then you have to find that medicine. So that's where um with this water, you know, getting water and, and doing offerings for water and saying prayers with, with over the water. Uh, I know there's several people out there that are um, out there that do a uh, Native American church. And that, that's the one of the main part is when that water comes into the teepee, they have to pray over that water. And whatever said is said, it, the water records what it's what we say. And then we consume it and we drink it and we we, we bless ourselves with it. We put it on our body and, and say, thank you, you know, because that revives us, that that water revives us and. The reason why I'm talking about the water is because on the Navajo Nation, there's different types of whales out there, and a lot of them are um, have to do with livestock. So uh, a grandma or grandpa and so the kids, they have to drink this water, and so the water may not be clean, but they're drinking it. So we're trying to fi find new ways of how we're going to get filters for, for these water situations like windmills water pumps, um, there's wells. Um, there's the ones I get are the ones that are, uh, the water is already flowing out and there's just a pipe that it connects to. So I just, uh, I don't have to pay money for it. I don't have to put quarters in the in the thing. I just go over there and we just um, plug the, the water pipe and it shoots out through the, the hose on top and straight into the barrel. And so that's the spring, artesian spring uh, water that we usually get. Usually um, uh, in Oak Springs or over towards uh, Salee or Big Mountain, those are the areas that I've gone to get to get water for families. So um, with that, that's that's kind of how I wanted to express about water and how it's very important in in um, in the, with the family, with the elders, and then for ourselves. It um, we were doing um, collecting those water bottles, the 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 ones in the case, and we I started realizing. Because I've been, I have some friends out in Flint, Michigan, where they had a water crisis there, and they had a whole lot of trash of de dealing with the, those water bottles. So that's that's where we came up with distributing out water barrels, and however uh, si bigger size that we can get depends on the sizes of the family. Like if there's a big family, we usually give them six, uh, two sixty gallons, or it, it, um, we're trying to step it up so we can get the the 275 gallon but it all depends on who how many are in the household determines how much water they get so that that's kind of where we're at and then also with the same with the food and um what we're handing out and giving out and uh raising for that so um i don't know if any of you have any questions or about what we're doing yeah we uh Batani, i wanted to ask about the windmills do you have, uh, are you working with some partners or do, uh, do, are you working on a, um, 
throughout the lands there because you know like you said again it's i didn't know about the what was it the last couple of series we learned about the uh what was it uh the bennett freeze or something does that affect uh, that side too as well or that's in tuba city bennett, bennett uh. in tuba city and um yeah my uncle lives in that area where the bennett freeze is mm. and uh they they uh, so far i've noticed that they lifted the for electricity but no, mm. the water, they still don't have water. They don't want running water. They don't want to run the pipe through there. So mm. it's the sad situation about Tuba City is um, you got people living in um, these housings that are that have uh, they have garden hoses and they're watering their 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 grass and whatever. But just down the street, about maybe a mile away, there's an elderly couple that don't have that all they have are uh, the small gallons of water. Not, I'm talking about. They're holding their water in bleach containers, um, uh, radiator containers, and whatever thing they can put water in. That's what they're holding. And so we had to deliver um, water barrels there to make sure that they had. I told them you need to get rid of these uh, little containers. That they're the chemical compound that that was in it is uh, absorbed into that plastic. And then when the water gets in there, I said, it mixes in there and then it gets back into the water and then that's how you get sick. So mm -hmm. I had to explain that whole process to them just for them to take the barrel. So they said, yeah, we'll, we'll use the barrel. So th that's what a lot of people don't, don't think about when they put water in a plastic container. That's, I mean, is it food? Like that's where I started learning about food grade barrel. Mm -hmm. you know, is it food grade, something that was already food that was in the barrel. You know, that, that's the type of barrel than uh, as to something else that was that's not meant to be. But a lot of the windmills are gone dry. Yeah. Um, when Kelly came across, we stopped at a windmill because the horses and the cows were standing around waiting for somebody to turn it on. Well, um, we, we filled it up and then I shut it off. Then um, a month later, me and Wayne went to the same windmill and there was no water in it. It was bone dry. The windmill that Kelly got to see, and um, I've watered them. Me and Wayne went by there, and it's bone dry. So it's it's not just affecting the people; it's affecting the livestock and their way of life. Um, <clears throat> if there's no water for the humans to drink, there's no water for their animals to drink, and animals are dying because they have no water. And in the same way with people, we went and delivered a lady water. And she had her own um, holding tank and her own pump and her, and her own well, but it's a stainless steel tank that has a lead lining in it. And this is what they've been drinking for years. So to have fresh, clean water delivered to you, um, I know people are thankful because of having the choice of okay, this is what water we have to bathe in, to cook with, to anything with, that it's really not even healthy for the animals to drink, let alone you to drink, and that's all you have. So when you bring them fresh water and fresh barrels, people are really thankful for it. Um, that's a lot of what I, I learned out here. Um, you know, we have city gallop water, but we don't drink it. We don't, we don't drink it. We go get spring water to drink um, because the city water is gross, but people out there, grandmas that don't have no vehicle or nothing, they they depend on, you know, um, okay, we don't have a vehicle, so we can't go over to Oak Springs to get water. So we have to drink the water that we have and it's in walking distance. And that's sad. And that's everywhere here um, on all four corners. And that's not just the Navajos, that's the Hopis and the Apaches. Ah the water that they have even zunis we um we delivered to the zunis firewood and stuff and um it broke my heart when grandma has to wait two weeks to get a wood voucher and not even knowing if she's going to get the wood voucher and she's only got five pieces of wood left um them are the things that we come across out here it's really humbling um the reservations at home in Washington, they're all paved, indoor plumbing, running water. Um, you come someplace that's 
Only other place I've seen it is in Alaska in the villages, out in the islands, on the villages that have no running water, dirt roads, and pallets for some sidewalks. So, I mean, I have seen that, but not have the fresh flowing water. Uh, in the villages in Alaska, they have um, springs that come bubbling out of the mountainside that um, people drink. But um, here, the, the, it, it's so totally different in that I'm getting used to it now for being here over a year, um, getting used to it and seeing things. And I talk to my sisters in Washington and I tell them, I said, you need to be thankful every night that you have a house that has running water electricity and indoor plumbing and then I started showing my sisters about what I see and what we go do and everything and they're really humbled it was really a humbling moment when um I went to a grandma's house and she has nothing um she lives in a hogan that um probably is built in this I don't know I say 50s or 60s um and um I watched a video called Broken Rainbow. And on that video, um, the mines, some of the elders use the rocks and stuff from the mines or the leftover boards from the mines that are poisonous, oh, yeah, radioactive, radioactive um, and they are dying from it. That is the only, and it's seeped into the water table. So it's not just not having water, there is chemicals or then where they mine for copper or uranium or the um, nuclear waste that's been put here that is so much into the water table drinking level that um, you have to be careful what you drink and where you get your water from. You really, I mean, that is a real eye opening when you have to stop and think, well, is it all right if I drink out of the spring or the creek? Because when I'm in Washington um, at home, I used to be able to go to the creek and drink water out of it or drink water out of the spring or even drink it out of the river. But here you can't because you have to stop and think, all right, has there been any mines here or anything that could have polluted the water? And it's a lot because where Wayne's property is, behind it, they had a copper mine. And it's like, I really stopped to think because I really, the first time we went down into the canyon, the water was running and I had to really stop and put my brakes on because I was thirsty and I wanted water and it looked good. It smelled good, you know, it smelled like water, but well, wait up behind me, there's the copper mine that they closed, but you know that all that stuff runs downhill, water does run downhill and that's in that creek bed. So is is there a, uh, is, is there plans on some type of initiative uh, to, to look into those kind of things? I mean, like you know, like because they really got those those the what is that that they gather wind like a wind uh, the wind. The wind uh, I can answer wind. part of that. I can answer part of that. We had moonshots down in the Bottaway Gap area, which is the West End. Wow. Uh, Bottaway Gap area is about the size of Delaware. We brought in the leading uh, professional in the water industry nationwide. He's actually known worldwide. He's retired and gone to work for Moonshots, which is one of the partners of Native Nations that we all belong to. And he went to every single well and came up with a solution. Uh, the main problem on the West End is Peabody Coal Mine was there for over 30 years. They were drawing water out at 12,000 gallons per minute for over 30 years to wash their coal. All that water went all the way to Nevada and obviously did not return. Mm. Everyone asked, why would they allow that? Well, they were offered jobs. So, I mean, when there's no jobs on the res and someone comes up with a solution, hey, you know, we'll, well, we'll make sure we ha hire all natives, then, then that's... Just that They spoke, because uh, I watched, if you watch the documentary Broken Rainbow, you will learn about how grandma signed off their property because somebody come in and start talking in Navajo, calling them grandma, you know, grandma sign here and you'll get money. Sign here and your animals will be taken care of. But when they only give them a bell of hay and that is it for the use of their land that they stripped and ruined that they cannot live on no more. Yes, um, the movie Broken Rainbow will really tell you a lot what happened to the 
who I talked to are the elders there in Bottaway Gap. There's uh, Freddie Black has been there his whole life. And he kind of explains everything to me in regards to like, oh, they had the Livestock Reduction Act where they came in and they slaughtered all the sheep and goats. You know, it's a really sad documentary what really happened with the natives. And it tells you how they worked in the mines the uranium mines and that they're dying and their families are dying because that's what they had to, to do to survive. And yeah, it's not right. really surviving. So do Batani, do you guys, do you guys have um, like the ceremonies that you're talking about for the water or the healing? Is it more like, I know with the COVID-19 stuff, is there more like the dances here? I just don't see this picture that's up now that there's uh, the, the, um, what they call those dancers now? They they was a divine healer. Or they 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 called him. Some call him the. Uh, he had a vision, and he was. They they call him a dreamer, but he wasn't really a dreamer. He was gifted. So uh, in that way, he was. He uh, had to go through all these uh, trials and tribulations for him to uh, obtain uh, the knowledge of ceremony. The now the knowledge of. Uh, of how to heal people. And so um, he went on this journey. And as he was on this journey, he had, he had a companion, which was the, the, the coyote was the one that was there, but he kind of like was jokingly misleading him around and he was kind of mischievous. So uh, because of that whole, the concept of uh, the process of unpredictability was what he represented. So anyway, we we're trying to find him, and and so uh, this this individual uh, grandfather, uh, first grandfather with the twelve feathers, he would had to go look for him and find him, and so he went. And, he, and so when he went on to find him, he realized that at that same time he was uh, meeting a specific deity or grandparents that he needed to learn some of the prayers from. So. Um, by the time he got back to the, cer the main ceremony, uh, they brought him back, and then uh, that's where he was. It was like it's a whole the whole concept of what I'm sharing is there the patient, there's the patient, and then there's the initiate, the person that becomes initiated. It's a whole process. In order to be to have ceremony, you have to have the patient, but then the patient becomes to be initiated. And then he becomes to be the one to um, be the, uh, what do you call that, um, apprentice. He apprentices the, the medicine man or the, the knowledgeable one who's like the, the 12 eagle feathers. He's wearing 12 eagle feathers and you can't see his face. Uh, when you're in ceremony, uh, he comes into the Hogan and you have to, you have to, uh, when I was getting initiated, I had to wear a blanket cover myself with the blanket and listen to the, the, the medicine man. And he would tell me, <clears throat> you have to wait until the grandfather comes, then we'll do the ceremony to and uh, have you be involved in the Ye'epiche. It's very similar to uh, like the, the Zuni, they have their sh uh, Shaloko dancing and then also the Hopi have their Kachina dancing. Very similar, but it's, it's uh, it has to do with the story of, of uh, the emergence and creation. And so they, when I was talking about these uh, teachings that they laid down, like this particular, uh, uh, what you see, this diagram, it talks about the east, the south, the west, the north, and then the colors, the, the white, the blue, the yellow, and the black. They all have meaning to them. And that's how it's connected in this, to this basket. And so... When, when the medicine man came, uh, uh, when he uh, would do the ceremony, like my, and for instance, my grandfather, um, he would say, uh, you have to uh, prepare yourself and then um, to understand what it means to be, have a um, or a uh, they say uh, prayer, just having this prayer. So what I'm explaining to you is for the East, is that uh, renewing process? Um, that's the mountain that sits. That's in that east is Sisna Jini, and then uh, all these other uh, names: the white male, uh, early dawn girl, and early dawn boy. 
that, those are the, the, the uh, I guess you could say the spirit protectors that um, oversee that process happening, like the dawn. And then um, that also where that's where your mother's clan is started, start. So it, and then for um, as a Dinez, <clears throat> that's kind of how I'm sharing this, uh, this particular uh, drawing or uh, sequence of what, what I'm uh, describing is the spring, the, the dawn in the morning represents the spring, um, the dawn and the birth. So uh, it's like when the birth, the consciousness awakens and when that consciousness awakens, they immediately go start to the center of the basket and start weaving the basket for themselves. So it's like you're, we're weaving our own basket and then and it goes to the south. So when the dawn is the spring, it goes to the south and then the south is part of the daylight, blue daylight and uh, blue daylight girl and blue daylight boy. They're, they're, they're all um, considered to be like I said, the holy people in helping uh, this, the individual learn. So in the east is the thinking process and the south is the um, uh, planning. You plan uh, gathering up your courage to plan so um, then that, that's also where the father's clan comes in. And, it, and then it's that part of the summer and the day and, and the youth is in that direction. So when it's the, the blue dawn, that, that's, that, that's why we have the blue, that's our medicine wheel. So, it's, so it goes from uh, more, uh, morning, white, dawn, blue daylight to yellow, yellow evening twilight, which is the yellow and the west side and, and the mountain. Uh, so those mountains, um, the east is Cisnat Jinn, it was a uh, um, Blanca Peak, and then over towards uh, um, um, the, I'm trying to remember that name of that. So, so this is uh, Mount Taylor by Grants, New Mexico. And then uh, the one that's over in the west is uh, San Francisco Peak. And uh, the name of it is Dog Sleed. So all these mountains, they, they, they they're like pillars. They, they hold up the sky, the Navajo cosmology in the universe, they hold up the sky. And so that's how the holy people um, laid, laid these, um, I guess you distinguished, mentioned my clan. I said, this is my mother's clan. This is my mother's clan, my father's clan, my uh, maternal grandparents' clan, and then my uh, paternal grandparents' clan. So it's going around in a circle. Yeah, that's what this whole structure represents. And, uh, and these uh, names like early dawn boy, early dawn girl, uh, blue daylight girl and blue daylight boy, and uh, yellow evening girl and yellow evening boy, they, those are there. There are guides uh, and on your experiences that you have. Every step we make is a, a like you have your masculine experience and then you have your feminine experience. So as you go left, right, left, right, as you're walking, that's what they represent so that you, they guide you to make uh, positive and right decisions in your mm -hmm. life. So um, everything's connected with the seasons. The, the morning dawn is connected with the spring. Uh, the blue daylight is connected with the, um, the summer. And then the yellow, yellow evening is connected to the uh, fall. And then to the north, the uh, black is rep representing, the, the winter is representing the night. So it's that whole process. And um, when you see the, the gems, white shell, turquoise, uh, abalone, and uh, jet, black jet, those are, they're, those are the, the gems that we use for offerings. When you give offerings back, like in particular for water, when you go to water, where the water is coming out and flowing, that's where we do prayers and say prayers because that water is a medicine. That's what I keep saying, it's a medicine. It's, I mean, even with these other tribes, the Anishinaabe, the Lakota, you know, all these different like Apaches, you know, Hopi, they're, they're saying that this water is very critical. It's, an, it's, our, it's our, our medicine. So we have to use it in a good way and we have to pray it with it in a good way because that's how it will help us. And so that's why I'm explaining this whole process on, of uh, the basket. And I have a mail ba I have a basket here. And this one is the basket that I've been using when I go out to teach and, and say, um, and to, to express all this, what I shared. Um, so I hope uh, 
I hope some of you can hear what I'm saying and then um, how I'm expressing yes. this. And then it's a, a, with this color um, where the hand is, this is, this is exactly, I had to come up with this because my grandfather used to say, he used to say it's be it's be it's Allah. He's saying that all the teachings of, of, of everything in the world, of everything in this existence, is all given to us in our hand as soon as we as soon as we're born into this world. So I was trying to figure out how is he going? How can we do this? So what I what I was showing sharing this hand is uh, the index finger for a Navajo or for it also represents it's your your mother, the index finger, and then the middle finger is your father, and then the ring finger, that's your uh, grandmother or grandfather, depending on which um, if, which gender you are. So <clears throat> then the same with the, your little finger, it's either your grandma or your grandpa. So <clears throat> that's how, I was in, ex, ex, how it was explained to me. So um, for me, the ring finger represents my grandmother. So and then the, the little finger represents my grandfather. Why I say that is because uh, it has to do with the clan system. And then um, also my the thumb is saying that's who, who we are, divine masculine or divine feminine. So um, that's what the thumb is. So it's spirit, mother earth, father sky, grandmother fire and grandfather water. There's four mountains behind that. That's what these nipples represent. There's a lot of teaching in their hand. That's what I was told. So those, those, and then the gems, the black jet, the white abalone, and then the turquoise and the, uh, the abalone shell. All those, they're all connect to your hand. And then that, and then your it connects to your body. So those, so we're all the same. We're all the same. There's no, we're not. Doesn't matter who we are. That's that's what my grandfather and grandmother used to tell me. So we're not any different from each other. We all have the same, same fingers. Thank you so much. And uh, this is this is great sharing. We appreciate it. Um, I just want to invite everyone to ask their questions before we conclude with a prayer. And I see that someone in our chat asked, uh, Janice said, thank you so much for taking up this banner for your community. I think she may be referring to the water banner that we had on the screen and also reaching out through social media and letting the public know and educate us and allowing us to offer our support. Will you become a nonprofit? And I, I, I believe you already working on that with Kelly. I don't know, Kelly is here in the room. Uh, not to push you on the spot, Kelly, but if you wanted to mention a few words, that would be great. <clears throat> oh, I'd be happy to. Hi, everybody. Um, it's been um, really one of the greatest pleasures of my life um, to know and be able to be of service to Batani and Joanne as they do their, this important work. As Joanne mentioned at the beginning, I was able to go out there and follow them around um, and see firsthand what they're doing out there. And yeah. it moved me so much that, um, that I wanted to continue to do some support. And so we're putting a bit of a structure around um, Cat Native Action and um, a, a new nonprofit that I formed is called Accomplice. And so we are, um, we, we are, we are accomplices um, in crime, um, yeah. you know, accomplice for good, as a matter of fact. And, <laughs> yes. um, and so I would um, very much um, encourage anybody uh, on this Zoom or um, on your social media platform to go ahead and um, plug in K Native Action, K-E-H, and A-T-I-V-E action.org and you will find um, a fundraising page that'll give you a little background information and a really wonderful video that um, Chris Cullen put together um, who has been supporting um, Joanne and uh, Batani and this work longer than I have. Um, and so it is all about collective action. It is all about direct action. It is all about capacity building and um, 
And that is one way in which you can help um, deliver some much needed funds to continue to build that capacity on behalf of, of, uh, of the Diné and, um, and our relations um, everywhere, really, but um, as close to them as they, as they can be, so. I want to ask you too, uh, do, do you do the sweetgrass hat, hat do. making? Do you guys do that um, still or? I, I haven't done that since I lived in Washington or um, um, I made my son a um, hat out of cedar. I know how to weave cedar and sweetgrass. I learned that from my, um, if you read in my bio, um, Paula Henry, she's my adopted mom. Ah. And um, when I, um, I mean, a lot of people read my bio, but I might as well talk on it because Sally, he's online and she's my behavior therapist at the time. Um, I lost my son. I, I have a, um, I'm an addict. I'm a clean and sober addict um, off of meth for years now, but I lost my son because of my choice in life. I didn't care. Um, my addiction was beyond full blown. Um, I didn't care. I didn't care about life no more. Mm. Um, meeting Sally Heath. I met Paula, and when I talked about my sisters, them are um, Paula's daughters. They're um, my adopted family. That's how I learned uh, about living life. Paula, she's not here. She died of cancer, but Sally's still here. Um, mm -hmm. She's online right now. Um, she's a wonderful person. Um, she's still with me. She fought with me to get my son back. I mean, I did the I did what I needed to do, but she was in my corner to, um, I'm, a, I'm a success story, um, majorly to um, state because I did a completely 360 degree turnaround. Um, mm. I went to see Sally one day and Sally told me um, either you sign the papers and give your son up for adoption or you fight for him. And I fought for him. Mm. Um, they told me if I have to jump off the cliff and somebody's going to be at the bottom of catching me, I had to learn to give in to that and to really realize that, that she's my safety net and she's got me, you know, mm. to give trust. And I don't trust, I have this, you know, I don't really trust a lot of people because of my life that I lived. Um, I learned not to trust and I'm opening up and learning how to trust, mm. but um then there's a two, and I learned about canoe journeys. And oh, this last year we were gonna, I was gonna take Wayne to go to do the canoe journey. Oh, you, did, you, did he go on there? No, because of the pandemic, we didn't get oh. to go. We didn't get to go because I want to take him home. Um, I want to take him to Squaxin Reservation mm. and um, take him there and meet my family that are there and meet like Sally Heath because she's a um, real good part of um, positive role model in my life. Um, and I got to do the canoe journey. I got to pick my son up from uh -huh. the uh, state office um, through his um, Sally Heath. I got to take my son to the canoe journey. My son is um, Callitz and Lakota. Mm. From, um, his family is from Sandy Rock Reservation. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, so he is. He's um, Callitz Lakota. Um, with her, I got to, um, and um, he's recognized as a a non rolled in member of Cowlitz tribe be mm. until his grandma either passes away and his dad passes away. That's the only time Jacob can become a rolled member and he oh. has to do it for himself. But if me and Sally went down and um, I have Jacob's lineage papers from Lakota side and Cowlitz side mm. going back four generations mm. to prove who my son was. Mm. If you look at my son, he doesn't look, he looks white as, <laughs> he looks white as me, um, but he has native in him and um, it's different than, um, with Sally, I got to, my son has a CIB um, mm. because of her in my corner. I, um, um, the state said, um, even though if I didn't fight for get my son back, they would terminate my rights. But mm. since his dad is a native, they would never terminate his rights. And I didn't think that was fair mm. at the time. And but um they did terminate his rights because he didn't do what he needed to do, the same things that I had to do. Um, so the Cowlitz tribe agreed with me and they terminated his rights. Um, so they're all in my corners. Um, awesome. 
I um, moved to Alaska. I bought two one-way tickets. Didn't know where we were going to live, but I wanted a new life. Mm. Um, I went to um, domestic violence growing up. Mm. Domestic violence relationship with his dad. So I wanted to do everything. And um, I did. I moved to Alaska and I lived, lived up there with the natives. Um, lived in a native housing. Mm. I did a lot of things with the natives. I took my son. We made drums together. I made traditional, um, what they call cuspuck. They're mm. winter coats for men or women. Um, I made them go up there with the natives. Um, I, I was working on a pair of um, mukluks. That's what oh. they call for uh, moccasins. They call mm. mukluks up there. Mm. I um, learned a lot. I mean, you know, I've been to the canoe journey. I've been to sweat. Um, I will buy um, and see my mom in Idaho who we were coming back from Oregon. And she dropped the bombshell that we're native, which I never knew <laughs> because I don't look at my mom does my real mom does. She looks like she's native, but um, even my siblings, my brothers, you could see they I'm the only one that has the white, white skin out of them. Um, that, that makes two of us then. Look at me. I was gonna... <laughs> I look at me. Just you're looking at you. You're looking at me. That's good. <laughs> no, just kidding. And so a lot of people. Um, they don't, they don't look at it, but, um, living with my mom, living on the reservation, um, I classify Paula as my mom. Um, I call her my mom. Um, I learned a lot from her. I learned how to weave cedar, um, do, um, the sweet grass baskets. I learned how to harvest it. I learned how to harvest cedar and how to prepare it and dry it and store it. Oh, we got to talk. I learned a lot from her. Um, she was a storyteller, um, She's a very beautiful woman. Uh, I just got one. I, I guess I, I know we're kind of running out of time here, but I got another. I, I got so much questions now. I'm, I'm going to be calling <laughs> you guys. Um, you, you, you must share me with me with the with the weaving part because uh, we we uh, my grandmother's always telling me to do the star quilt with the diamonds and cut them up every time I get in the sewing machine. I, I know it goes a straight ray, but somehow my material and everything goes this way. I don't I, know. I, I have to ask my mom about that now. My my birth mom, um, she makes quilts. I took mm. Wayne to go to her sewing room and she's made that star quilt. My mom's made it, but out of little tiny stars. I mean, a half a square blocks. I mean, she sews by hand. I can't do that. <laughs> I can't, no, exactly. I can be, but I can't, I can't do that part. No, I tried many times. I tried many times. Um, but uh, I'm, just, I'm not giving up though. I'm still going to continue no. on with this because that's a healing. Can I, can I sneak in a question about water? I don't know if you okay. can hear me. We can oh. hear you. Yeah, there was a the gentleman who spoke a little bit early, or who had, it's Wayne. Okay, it's yeah, well, it's Peter. I don't think it was anyway, but it was somebody who had hired some specialists, and they had evaluated the windmill pumps. White Feather had also mentioned that there were a whole bunch of windmills, and he was under the impression that most of them just needed welding. But I don't know if there was somebody um, I could help hire that because because it's true, like on. Um, if the well is not deep enough, sometimes it has to go deeper. Um, it's yeah. not that um, they took samples from um, like um, 15 different wells around the area on um, the Navajo Nation. Uh -huh. And out of the 15, five are only drinkable for human consumption. Okay. The rest of them are poisoned or okay. they're what they call livestock water. Well, yeah. that's why that's why the, the uh, we brought in that gentleman from Moonshots who's found a solution for those wells to make them drinkable for human consumption. And then, there's a lot, since our drought, there's a lot of them wells that were livestock wells, they're dry now. There's no water. Right. Well, the I mean, well in my little house is going dry too, you know, yeah. so very quickly. And I live in wet Oregon. And, oh, um, okay. okay. <laughs> But the water table has been going down and down. It really has. My brother lives in Asturias on the uh, Oath Coast, and it's going down for him, too. So it'd be interesting maybe for me to get his number at some point, you know, after this deal, because to have, you know, maybe some of the good ones need to go deeper and um, maybe a new well in some location that's more likely to be good, I, you know. But it, it's, yeah, um, it's, it's, I really, it's like, if you know, it's around here, it's the uranium mines or the copper mines. Right. Um, they are, um, I lived at the Grand Canyon, lived there for 10 months and worked there. 
um, their iridium mines are not even covered, not even closed up. Um, yeah. If you walk off the beaten path, you can find them. And all that water runs in there, then runs out. Right. Down into the Colorado River. And so you yeah, think about up, people yeah. that are drinking that, um, that's the uranium. And I mean, I wouldn't even drink the water up there. Sure. I would come to visit Wayne and pack water home with me to the Grand Canyon. Anybody else have any questions for us? Yes, we actually have, uh, Patricia, go ahead. If you could unmute your microphone. We have people texting and raising hands. Uh, friends, please unmute your microphones and just ask, please, because uh, it's hard to catch up. Patricia Ann Davis and she Chata the ne Inchle Achitni Bashalchin Ado Kiaani Eta Shanala Ado the Yin the ne the Yaja Inchle Ado Nihitle Ani Ya. Oh, what the It's a, a greeting to all my relatives and extended family and an affirmation of a maternal and paternal lineage, as well as the affirmation that we're all a precious child of creator within creation simultaneously, which is the natural order. We call that hojo. And so I wanted to ask you, um, if you knew Tom Noki, who lived north of um, Burnside on the way to Chinle, and um, he used to he used to practice um, Twasakagi. Uh, and do you, are you, and also I think there was um, a person at White, uh, White, White Cone. And right now his, he, he, his name um, escapes me. Uh, is there anyone that you know that is still conducting these, um, these this, this water ceremony? The, the the only one I knew was over in um, Mariano Lake, but he's gone now. He's the um, late Charlie Begay. It was five and there. And, uh, but the ones that you mentioned, I, I never knew about them on the Arizona side, just the New Mexico side. Yeah. Do you, do you know and understand and could describe this? It's really sad for me to, because I, they, they both did, they don't, they both, uh, I was a patient of, they, they performed these. One was my uncle and the other, Dudley. Um, I've been through those ceremonies. And it's really sad for me to know that they're all passed on. And I don't know anybody who has learned this. You Can you just give your audience, a, because it's a water water ceremony. And mm -hmm. nobody, even the, the, the Neh people don't, don't even know about it. Yeah. Uh I guess they, uh, I just know like um, with the mountain way to catch it. So the last, the Togi, even not sure, there's some chants that are connected to just talk. They, this for the natural, it's the water comes flowing from the mountain. So um, then there's that basket that they used to use for mount, uh, rain ceremony. Then I don't, I haven't seen that basket. The the other day, yeah, that the other day, the other day, and I guess it's a little different. It has the this 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 section of the of the four clouds. It's on a shape. Yeah, the sun deck. Then I haven't seen that basket again around. Just only in the, on the on the internet. But the day like this, a live basket like this, I haven't seen one that they use at the rain. So later, uh, some of you that don't understand uh, that we, uh, the Navajo did have the rain ceremony, but it, at that time um, they said it's very, very uh, critical because uh, we there was a flood and having to do with the water monster or the water buffaloes or you know um, so those by them doing that ceremony was critical because if you if it's like if you unleash this water, then this water will start to flood again all over. So that's the reason why they said it, you have to be careful with that. 
And so um, that's kind of how I understand this. So, wait. Yeah, I'll just say this, two, two more things that it's it's the like we have male rain and female rain and that Huesapagi is the water going up and the water coming down. And just for your audience information, there is somebody mentioned divine masculine and divine feminine, I think. Yeah, <laughs> or maybe it's just that I have it in my head uh, for Topashishchena and Nayet Nezana. So just telling your audience for a little bit more further information, the divine feminine life giver nurturer and the male protector provider in saying that um, all every child is born through the water. Yeah. That's where the water of life uh, like that, that yeah. the medicine is water, the water of life, and so on. But think think about that. Every child is born through the water. Any more, any more questions? I was just I was just wondering if there's any any other ways that we can help besides the the website that's already been put up in the chat and the GoFundMe site. Um, Oga and Maria and Kelly, they've all. Um, and the state of New Mexico, Arizona, and all the little states, um, all the states around us. So um, when we say, um, let me get my train of thought. Um, hand sanitizer, well, we got plenty of that, but it's the wipes. Um, Maria and Oga and them guys sent us a hand um, a machine that does the sterilization for when we, I give out food, but grandmas and grandpas and single parents that we deliver food to, they need wipes and wipes are like so far in between. I found them twice, twice since our pandemic started. I found them twice in the store. And once I went to go get them because they're only allowed one per person. So once you go get them and you go back the next day, they're all out because everybody goes and buys them. Um, that is the only thing, Clorox wipes, any type of san um, sanitary wipes where they can, um, we sanitize their food for them, but we want them to be able, if they do go end up going, somebody else brings them food, to be able to wipe down their food before they bring it in the home. Um, because it's really, really bad here. That pandemic has really hit the four corners. And I'm not just talking Navajos, I'm talking the Hopis, Patches, Zunis, and all the other brothers and sisters here on the four corners. Um, it's hit hard, and when you cannot go and get Clorox wipes to wipe down your food, we went to Albuquerque and waited in line. And waited in line. We went to Ab yeah, we went to Albuquerque and waited in line at the, um, Sam's Club. Only to, be told, uh, Only to be told, sorry, they're for first responders. <laughs> and I'm talking first responders are they get to go in in the store at seven o'clock in the morning, and they buy all the leech wipes, alcohol wipes. Um, Alcohol, um, hydrogen peroxide, any um, any type of anything to wipe down the bleach or uh, Lysol in it, they buy it all. They buy it. all the disinfectant. Then the public goes in, and that's non first responders. That's like me and Wayne. If we go in there, they're all out. Can you put the address where we can send them in the chat, please? Yes. Can you do that, Olga? Uh <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh, Kelly, Kelly says she can do it. Oh, All right, Kelly. Kelly I appreciate Kelly. it. Thank you, hey, Kelly. Kelly. <laughs> thank you. I, I also wanted to just say thank you to um, my uh, my sister. I call her Shema, the one that spoke and asked the questions about the water and the rain. Um, mm. She's the she helps teach real good too. So. I'm glad that she showed up and supported what we're doing. Mm. And uh, Shuma sh means mom. Mm. Uh, Joanne, there was also a, uh, uh, a comment from Sally here. Yeah, and I know. Can you read it? I don't want to cry. <laughs> I, think <laughs> she's, she's I think she's here. I don't know if she wants to say it, but I can also read it if she doesn't. And it says, it says the many communities the many communities you have blessed with the gift of your life and your great ability to serve and help others are deeply enriched we are so all so very proud of you and your journey 
So if there are no other questions, um, may we ask Wayne to conclude with the walk in beauty prayer, please. Oh, Wapala, thank you so much. Thank everybody for coming on and ask questions, wanting learning, and thank you so much, my love to you, my heart to you, brothers and sisters. Thank you again, Wayne. Thank you again, Joanne. Till next time, guys. Thank Maybe you. for the next episode. Thank oh. you. Oh.